So my name is Kara Masulo Ekwabu, and I've been working at the college for a little more than four years now. I work in CISLA, which stands for the Center for International Studies in the Liberal Arts. Um, I also work very closely with colleagues across the Walter Commons for Global Study and Engagement. Um, I, in, in CISLA, I do international internships and um, curricular and co-curricular development. And with my colleagues in the Walter Commons, um, I do lots of different global programming, including pre-departure and re-entry work around Study Away. Um, most recently, we launched the Global COVID Project, bringing researchers together from uh, different part student researchers from our different partner institutions uh, across the globe. Um, I do things with with colleagues across the campus and off campus um, off campus advising, um, and so it's it's fun being able to wear a lot of different hats. Um, I recently completed my master's degree in international education through SIT, uh, the School for International Training, and I'm really passionate about this topic that we're going to talk about today, that of intercultural competence. Um, I also, uh, before coming to Khan, worked for a small company, well, it's much larger now, uh, called Putney Student Travel, leading, leading high school students um, on trips, uh, international education trips. Uh, so I'm really passionate about this field and bringing people together to engage across difference. So I wanted to be, oh, and also my pronouns are she and her. And I wanna give my colleagues a chance to introduce themselves. Uh, Lauren, why don't you go ahead? Sure, thanks. Um, hi everyone, my name is Lauren O'Leary. My pronouns are she, her. I am the coordinator of the Walter Commons for Global Study and Engagement at Connecticut College. So in my role, I work with students who are interested in having different global experiences, whether that means traveling abroad or attending an event on campus or um, getting involved locally. Um, and I work with colleagues in the Walter Commons as well um, on some of the projects that you just heard Kara mentioning. Um, a little bit about my background. I received my master's in international education a few years ago. And um, during that time really focused on this connection between expanding perspectives, engaging with difference and how to do that responsibly and what that could mean for individuals and society as a whole. So like Kara, I'm um, also passionate about this topic and really excited to be here with everyone today. And I'll hand it off to Melissa. Hi everyone, welcome. I am Melissa Ryan. Um, I joined the college in 2016 as the Associate Director for the Walter Commons for Global Study and Engagement um, and have more recently added uh, a, a fellowship advisor to that role. I uh, work with colleagues across the college to support the development of international partnerships and support faculty and students in all stages of off-campus learning opportunities and exchanges. I have a master's in inter intercultural management and practical work experience that includes uh, five years based in the United Kingdom where I ran the City Colleges of Chicago's uh, distance education program for the American military. Um, I've also worked for humanitarian organizations in Bosnia and Herzegovina implementing capacity building programs and have traveled and worked in Spain and Central America and um, the continent of Africa. A bit. So I come to this work with a strong belief in the power of story in building connection and bridges across difference. And I'm really thrilled to be here with all of you and to be sharing this workshop with my colleagues. So thank you. Thank you, Lauren and Melissa. So now that you've heard from us, we wanna hear from you briefly. Um, Angela is gonna open up a poll. If you could, it, you, you should see a pop-up on your screen in just a few moments, um, indicating what your affiliation with Connecticut College is. So when you see that poll pop up, if you could go ahead and participate. Are you student, faculty, staff, alumni from the community? We've got the answers coming in. Oh, this is a really great distribution. We have representation from all categories here, which is really exciting. So I see, yep, about five students, four faculty, nine staff, six alumni, three from the New London community. Thank you for joining and three other, I wonder what those other categories are. 
Um, well, this is really exciting um, and this will really add to the richness of this experience um, since we're all coming from such different corners here. Uh, so we can go ahead and stop sharing the poll. Okay, great. All right. And um, now I'm also just curious to hear briefly what brings you all here today and what you're hoping to get out of today's workshop. Um, so if you'd like to share, you can go ahead and just put a few words in the chat and Melissa will read, read those responses out to us. Sorry. Whoopsies, sorry everyone. Interested, uh, people interested in storytelling, intercultural affairs. My work focuses on belonging and building bridges to, so stories and narrative are central to my work. Justice, to build on storytelling experience in the last workshop. I use narrative for story exchanges in my classes and interested in additional methods. David Dorfman, welcome. I, let's say without, I am losing this. I love storytelling of all kind and I want to help students in their travel via cultural competency. People are very interested in storytelling and using digital storytelling uh, in their classes, interested in intercultural affairs and stories, a language major. We love the languages in the Walter Commons. Uh, I'm in the field of international education and I host Morning Story Circle with visiting international students. So I'm interested in learning more. I have participated in story exchanges in the past and would love to continue to hear more stories. It's a great, great response. Uh, storytelling as a means of creating empathy. I teach about anthropology and human rights and use narrative for story exchanges in my classes. I see stories build connections and empathy. And my FYS was about travel narratives and I loved it. I'm also in CISLA and interested in cultural competency. It's great. I am interested in connecting with others and building uh, cross-cultural connections. I'm here to learn more from my wonderful colleagues. Thank you, Suzuko. <laughs> Shared storytelling discussions on sharing, shares, shared storytelling and discussions on. Interested to learn storytelling tools to help students tell their stories in, in a career context and always interested in people and their stories. Want to further experience storytelling to bridge the empathy gap that undermines so some social justice initiatives. Absolutely. I'm here to learn more from you all and in integrating storytelling into how I teach choreography. Great. Wow, thank you so much everyone for taking a moment to share. It sounds like we have quite a bit to learn from you all. Uh, and so I'm really excited to be in this shared environment together. So before we jump into the activity itself, I wanted to give a little bit of context on what we'll be talking about. Um, so uh, we'll spend the first 20 minutes or less uh, just going through a little bit of background on the concept of intercultural competence and the methodology of story circles. We'll then send you into breakout groups of four or five people um, and you'll spend time doing the activity itself and sharing a brief story. Um, and the story will be very non-threatening. It will really just be the story of your name. So you can take it, keep it a surface level or bring it as deep as you'd like. Um, and then uh, at, for the last portion of the workshop, we'll do a debrief on the activity um, and how we might be able to bring this forward and use it in different contexts. So I've already used the term intercultural competence quite a few times in the past few, few minutes. So I'm curious um, to know uh, what everybody's experience is in the room with this term, if you have familiarity with that term or maybe a synonym of that term. Um, if you'd like to share in the chat, um, maybe just a word or two about what this term means to you, you can go ahead and do that. Being flexible. Yes, certainly being flexible. Uh, humility. Mm -hmm. 
I know that it means ongoing learning, not just a one-time thing. Absolutely. Globally aware, respect, empathy, and understanding. Understanding and acknowledging cultural difference, listening, the ability to listen, openness. Yes. Thank you for sharing. These are all important components of intercultural competence. And um, uh, you'll see that many different researchers studying this concept have slightly different definitions as well. Um, so uh, one definition I'll share with you is from the association, the American Association of Colleges and Universities. Um, on their intercultural competence and knowledge value rubric, they use Milton Bennett's definition of intercultural competence as a set of cognitive, affective, and behavioral skills and characteristics that support effective and appropriate interaction in a variety of cultural contexts. So a bit of a mouthful, essentially we're looking at the, the cognitive, the, our thought patterns, our feelings, and our actions, and finding ways that support effective and appropriate interaction in a variety of cultural contexts. So concretely, some of those competencies are things that many of you mentioned um, that can include cultural self-awareness and knowledge of other cultural worldviews, empathy, verbal and nonverbal communication, curiosity, and openness. And another definition I'll share is from Darla Deerdorf, who um, actually designed this methodology that we're going to use today. And she summarizes intercultural competencies, um, saying, in essence, they are about improving human interactions across difference, whether within a society, differences due to age, gender, religion, socioeconomic status, political affiliation, ethnicity, and so on, or across borders. And we could also add you know, other differences in this category, including race. Um, I like this definition. I, I find it a bit more all-encompassing and, and a bit more simplistic. Okay. And an, an important point that somebody brought into the chat is that intercultural competence, which we can also ref refer to as cultural humility, um, the development of these skills and aptitudes is a lifelong process. I don't think anybody ever gets to a point where they can say, I am interculturally competent. I've checked all the boxes and I have no more development to go. Uh, there is always more learning and there's always more developing um, within this framework. So a little bit about the methodology itself. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly simple tool. Um, but very profound and powerful. And it draws on the power and the deep history of storytelling as a global form of relationship building. As I mentioned, it's, uh, it was designed by Darla Deerdorf, who is the executive director of the Association of International Education Administrators, uh, also a research fellow at Duke University and longtime researcher of intercultural competence. She developed this for UNESCO uh, as an adaptable and accessible approach to fostering intercultural competencies across multiple contexts and audiences. Um, so it's already been used worldwide um, in a with a variety of age groups and different contexts. Um, and I will share with you the, the manual at the end of this session so that if you're interested in learning more about the methodology and how to use it, um, it's a free tool and it's, it's really handy. So I will be sharing that at the end. Um, one, um, some of the key tenets of this activity are to foster community uh, and trust, build empathy and practice listening for understanding. So some of the goals and objectives for the workshop today. First, I'm hoping that all of you here will, by the end of today, be able to understand a little bit more deeply the concept of intercultural competence and foster this development in yourselves. So practice cultivating empathy and respect for others, gain skillfulness in listening for understanding, develop relationships with others from different backgrounds um, and explore commonalities and differences, 
and gain increased self-awareness. I'd like to return for a moment to that second bullet on gaining skillfulness and listening for understanding. Um, I think this one can easily be overlooked because we all like to think of ourselves as good listeners. Um, I know I certainly do. I like to say I'm a good listener, but um, th the first time I did this activity and other activities like it, I realized, wow, listening really is a skill that needs to be practiced and honed. Um, because oftentimes when we're in conversation with others, we're listening and then relating it immediately to our own experience um, or listening to be able to respond, to be able to agree or disagree. Um, and very rarely do we stop and listen and try to really create space for that other person and truly try to understand where that person's coming from, devoid of our own experience or interpretation. So I really invite you all to keep that in mind as you're going through this activity and to try to fully be present for each person sharing their story. So the second um, major goal and objective is to, um, to give a tool to all of you here today to be able to bring forth in your own circles. So to learn about this methodology and perhaps adapt it for your own purposes. So I'm going to um, pass this off to Melissa to go through our next slide. Yeah, uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the group guidelines when we do break you out into um, your breakout rooms. Um, one is that we would like you to be aware that we are not recording the breakout room. So all of what you share will be confidential. Um, and you, you are welcome to share what, what you want to in the, in the breakout room, but don't but please maintain the confidentiality when you leave. Um, we would like you to speak honestly and from your own perspective and personal experience and to really listen for understanding as Kara just mentioned. Um, it's, it's often a reflex to wanna to respond immediately to someone, but to try and hold counsel and, and just listen as, as people should have the time to share their stories. There are time parameters that we're gonna give you with instructions. And so we're gonna ask that you decide if someone in your group will be a timekeeper. And um, that as the time is, is keeping track of the time and that you come up with a nonverbal signal that you can use to indicate when there's no more time left. Sometimes um, people use bells, sometimes they use hand signals, they, you know, whatever you come up with together is fine. Um, and please, if you can, unless there's a, 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 a serious reason why you can't have your camera on, we would like you to have your camera on because normally this kind of an experience would be done in person where you are seeing the other person sharing their story and we would like to try and replicate that as much as possible even in a virtual space. Um, and then if there are other things that you decide as a small group that you would like to, to create a space that makes you feel safe in sharing your stories, then you can come to that agreement in your small group. Thank you, Melissa. So uh, now you're probably all curious as to what you'll be doing in these breakout rooms. Um, so I'll go, I'll take a moment to go through the instructions here. And um, we will also share a document in the chat with you that has these instructions copied on them so that you can have them to refer to once you get into your breakout rooms. Don't feel like you need to memorize everything right now. Um, so first you'll just take a moment among the four or five of you to decide on the order in which you'll share your stories. Um, a simple ordering method could be choose, you know, who's ever, who's ever birthday is closest to today could go first and then chronologically from there. Um, and as Melissa mentioned, you'll agree on a nonverbal signal to indicate that someone's coming to close to their allotted time which is two minutes, um, <laughs> important to note. So in two minutes or less, uh, each person will take uh, turns sharing your name and the story about your name. So what does it mean? How did you come to have this name? Um, any, any fun facts you'd like to share about the history of your name? Um, and like I mentioned at the beginning, you're welcome to keep this as surface level or as personal as you would feel comfortable with, and that is completely up to you as the person sharing. 
Again, remember to listen for understanding so you're not interrupting anybody's story or commenting um, or even asking questions. Um, that will that will come a little bit a little bit of that will come at the end. So once every person in the circle has had a turn to share their two minute story of their name, you'll engage in what's called the flashback round. So going back to the first person who shared their story, each person other than the storyteller will then share a specific memorable part of um, that person's story in 15 seconds or less. Um, so, and then you'll go on to the second storyteller. And again, everyone in the circle will share a memorable moment in 15 seconds or less from that person's story. And so you'll go around until everyone um, has had a chance to share for all the stories that are, have been told. Um, and so, like I mentioned, you'll have about 20 minutes in the breakout rooms, which should be ample time for everyone to both share their stories and engage in the flashback round. If you end early, we're going, I've got at the, the handout they're going, that we're putting in the chat has a few debriefing questions at the end. So you're welcome to discuss those debriefing questions if you end early. So before we, we start this, um, I will have, I will, um, open it up for questions, but first we'll just model what we're talking about here. So I'm gonna pass it off to Lauren to go ahead and share the story of her name. Thanks, Kara. Um, so my name is Lauren Paulette O'Leary. Uh, so Lauren doesn't really have any special significance. My parents were actually going to name me Megan, but my cousin was named Megan two months before me. So they had to go back to the drawing board. Um, but I like Lauren, I have a lot of different nicknames that I use in different circles, which is pretty fun. Um, my middle name is Paulette, and that actually comes from my great grandmother. My mom's family is Jewish, and it's a Jewish tradition to name the next baby after the last person that had passed away. So I'm named after my great grandmother. I, I never met her, but I've heard about her, and it's kind of a neat connection to have, have her name. Um, and my last name, O'Leary, comes from my dad's side. Um, it is a very Irish um, sounding last name, so I get that often. Um, but in fact, you know, my, my dad's family is Irish, but we're a few generations removed from actually living in Ireland and moving to the United States. So I don't have a super strong connection to it. Um, so it's just interesting that it signals how uh, Irish I am when there's a lot of other parts of my identity that aren't in there. Um, I do like the O apostrophe L because I sign my initials often as LOL. Um, people argue with me that that's not right, but I stick to it. Um, and it's just interesting. I've actually been thinking about my name a lot because I'm getting married this summer and deciding what to do with my name. So it's interesting to kind of be thinking about what my name means to me. Um, and I'll end there. Thanks. Thank you so much, Lauren. As you can all see, um, you did stick perfectly within your time limit, but Melissa had a nice nonverbal signal to let her know that she was coming close. Um, so Lauren has shared her story and we can pretend that I've shared my story and Melissa shared her story. And now we're gonna engage in the flashback round. So I will go ahead and tell Lauren um, what stood out to me from her story. Um, one thing that stood out Lauren was uh, the naming of your middle name and how your family connected it to um, your great grandmother. And I thought that was really meaningful to have that connection to your ancestry. And so then Melissa will share her flashback. And actually my flashback is the same. I, I love the idea of that tradition. I think um, I've incorporated names in my family for, for our children. I love that it is a Jewish tradition that I didn't know about. That's wonderful, thank you. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and just take a moment. Does anybody have any questions before we enter into breakout rooms? Um, as you can see, Lauren has put in the chat the um, instructions that I just had on the screen. So you can refer back to those if you forget exactly what we're doing. You don't see any questions. Um, so at this point, Angela, I will ask if you could end the recording.